بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این السلام علیکم ایوری ون سعید حسین حیدر ود یو اینڈ وی آر اسٹل گوئنگ الانگ ود ڈفرینٹ تھیوریز اینڈ ڈیفینیٹلی آل آف یو مسٹ بی تھنکنگ دیٹ مے بی دیر آر ٹو مینی تھیوریز بٹ دیر از واٹ لائف از آل اباؤٹ دیٹ وین وی آر اسٹڈینگ اے پرٹیکولر ڈائمینشن دین ڈیفینیٹلی اے تھیوری ٹینس ٹو ایمنیٹ فرام ایٹ اینڈ بیسکلی ایوری تھیوری ہیز ڈفرینٹ انٹرپریٹیشن آلسو ناؤ ان دا پریویس ون وی وار لوکنگ ایٹ اگین دی مارل ہیزٹس تھیوری or the hazard uh, model theory, which again looked at the hazards which tend to exist in which the managers of a particular organization for their own benefit would be creating structures and frameworks and, and regulations and also uh, opportunities for themselves. And that would basically compromise on the betterment of other people. Today, we are going to be looking at the political theory. Now again, politics is everywhere. We talk about politics in families, we talk about politics within spouses, we talk about politics within community, society, nations, global politics, but also organizational politics. And within that organization, also hierarchical politics. So the political theory in corporate governance is looking at the different political dimensions and interpretations of political texture and contexture within a particular organization. So let's look at it. Uh, a little bit uh, more art articulately through our different slides and, and look at those. So when we are looking at the political theory, the task of corporate organization is by developing voting support from shareholders rather than purchasing voting power. So this is extremely important. You know what happens is, is that uh, when the elections are taking place within the organization, then what is happening is, is that the top management is influencing the shareholders, especially in the context of proxy voting. So what is happening is, is that that whole manipulation process is actually a political process in which they are being done. Now, when we talk about purchasing vote, we're not talking about giving a particular amount for that, but it could be something else. It could be indirect purchasing of vote. It could be by giving different favors, and that is called conflict of interest. So it's very, very important that we do not let conflict of interest supersede or overcome the corporate governance regulation and rule within a particular organization. And that basically means that if there is any conflict of interest, it is mandatory that it should be declared. Secondly, uh, all of those uh, should be uh, accumulated within a particular database and all out efforts should be done that there is no manipulation or exploitation in purchasing votes and garnering support for any political group or community within the particular organization. And that is rather important because if you let the purchasing of vote take place, then again, the whole theory tends to dissipate of corporate governance and the very essence of corporate governance is compromised. And that would again lead to an overall uh, manipulation and, and exploitation by the elite few. So looking at it a, a little bit further, we will see that having a political influence in corporate governance may direct corporate governance within the organization. So that is exactly what I was saying just a little while ago, that that would tend to manipulate the whole organization because whatever was done initially, if it was malafide from the very beginning, then the exploitation also begins from the very grassroots and from the very foundation. So it is extremely important that you have to create mechanisms which safeguard this type of exploitation. Secondly, eliminate conflict of interest. And third, ensure that votes cannot be purchased directly or indirectly. Moving forward a little bit more, we see the allocation of corporate power, profits and privileges are determined through the government's favor. So again, this is the external political context that Uh, connections with government, connections with vested groups, uh, connections with power groups, uh, connections with different uh, corporate associations, they all are playing a different role. And it could lead to uh, also many advantages for the organization in profits and privileges. But again, uh, that uh, would be immoral, that would be considered to be exploitative, that would be considered to be actually blatant corruption, and that should not be allowed because uh, equal competition and a fair living field is very, very important uh, for the economy of any nation. 
and secondly also encourages fair competition. So, that is very important. So, intrapolitical and extrapolitical both aspects have to ensure that there is a level playing field, that things are being done according to laws, that there is no conflict of interest, there is no exploitation, there is no corruption and uh, there is no manipulation by using power, wealth and authority for the benefit of individual or institution either of the two. Uh, and, and then let us look at another dimension and that is the political model of corporate governance can have an immense influence on governance development. So, that is also uh, something uh, which sometimes uh, is overwhelming and therefore, we have to ensure that it becomes void ab initio from the moment it starts it has to be declared void. Uh, there have to be intra organizational mechanisms which ensure that this is not allowed and thirdly, it is extremely important that uh, there are uh, fair and competitive audits taking place and it is not exploited in such a way that the different stakeholders are actually intertwined with each other for the benefit of each other which would be compromising uh, the majority uh, at the other end and that would then have an immense influence on corporate governance because then all of the corporate governance mechanisms would also be developed in such a way that they favor a select few and that would be absolutely against the very essence of corporate governance and how morality is conceived in a corporate context. Thank you so much.